All right, in this video, we're going to look at the research that has led to our understanding of DNA containing the genetic information. So the first experiment we're going to look at was by Griffith. Now, Griffith was working on a vaccine for pneumonia, and there are two strains of the bacteria. There's a smooth strain and a rough strain. The smooth strain is virulent or causes disease, and the rough strain is non-virulent. It doesn't cause disease. So when he took the smooth strain, injected them into the the mouse, the mouse dies from pneumonia. Took the rough strain, injected those in the mouse, the mouse lives. He then took and he killed some of the smooth strain bacteria, injected those into the mouse, and the mouse lives. Again, that makes perfect sense. But then when he took the a mixture of the, the dead heat uh, disease causing bacteria and the live harmful bacteria, injected those into the mouse, the mouse dies of pneumonia, and you find that there were live S strain bacteria. So something was changing or transforming the, the harmless bacteria into harmful bacteria. We call that a transforming principle. Now he didn't know what it was, he just knew that it was going on. So transformation occurs when a cell picks up DNA from outside the cell and gets new traits. That's what we know is happening today. Griffith concluded that the transforming factor had to be a gene. The next experiment was by Avery and several other researchers. He, they repeated Griffith's experiment, but they used pure DNA and pure protein from the heat-killed S virulent bacteria. So they took, again, took and extracted the, the, the cell parts, basically, and they put enzymes in there to break down all the DNA to get the pure protein, and enzymes to break down all the protein to get the pure DNA. And what he discovered was that the nucleic acid DNA stores and transmits information from one generation bacteria to the next. So what basically happened was when they injected the pure DNA, the mouse died. But then when they injected just the pure proteins, nothing happened. So that seems to show that DNA not protein, is the genetic information. So the next experiment involves something called a bacteriophage, which is a specific kind of virus that infects bacteria. This is the, the one they worked with is T4, and it looks something like this. So what, he, what Hershey and Chase did, they wanted to confirm the results of the, uh, of, of the Avery experiment. So they labeled, so a virus is basically just two things. It's genetic information, DNA, and protein. And that's pretty much all there is. So they grew the bacteriophages in, in, in the media that contain radioactive phosphorus. And that would label the DNA. And then they grew some more in radioactive sulfur, which would label the proteins. And so what they found was that when they allowed the, the phages to infect the bacterium, in the ones with the radioactively labeled phosphorus, the radioactivity was inside the bacterium. The genet it got injected inside. But with the radioactive labeled protein, there was no radioactivity inside. It was all outside the cell. So again, that seems to confirm a res results of DNA, not protein, being the genetic information. So that confirmed Avery's finding that DNA was the genetic information. So what is the role of DNA? Well, DNA stores genetic information. It's in the nucleus of eukaryotes. It can be copied, and it's really good at copying itself so that every time a cell divides, it makes an exact copy for the new cells. And it allows certain genes and certain cells to be expressed and to be used to do something. In most cases, that's to make a protein, for instance, the enzyme that makes pink or purple pigments in flowers.